research disparages psychiatry. Every five seconds, and then it, you, you hear of another foaming in the mouth hatred of psychiatry. Well, let me tell you, they don't have any problem using psychiatry as a weapon. On Paulette Cooper, in the program to destroy her and take her out, read Tony's book. They wanted to drive her insane so she would be institutionalized. And with Stacy, they actually had mental health official come, a couple of them showed up at her door, and they said, we've had reports on you that you are lost a lot of weight and you're obsessively collecting cats. They were there to take her to the mental asylum. Um, one night, two women showed up at our door from the mental health department um, to commit me because <laughs> they had received anonymous calls that I was crazy and that I was collecting diseased cats, a sure sign of insanity. Um, and they were very surprised when they actually met me and had a chance to talk to me and I explained to them what was actually going on with the Scientologists and what they were trying to do. They were willing to turn in a sealed member to psychiatry that they absolutely think is the worst, the worst operation that psychiatry is evil. This is the church's view. Before one can build anew, one must clear away the rubble of the old, and particularly when strewn within that wreckage are the remnants of psychiatry. So, to roll it out as LRH described it, psychiatry is not only a half-witted dream for planetary control, it is also a terror symbol that decimated a hundred million human beings in the last century alone. In this way, we inspire a groundswell of outrage and the courage to triumph over evil, and so we build an intrepid legion of psych busters who swear to inform and prosecute, to legislate and shut down, and dismantle the whole infrastructure, thus ridding humanity of the ultimate evil, and so clearing the road for human dignity and freedom. They wanted to take a CEO member and get her incarcerated in a mental asylum because she was speaking out on the church. She says Scientology sets out to destroy anyone who criticizes it. Someone who um, speaks publicly against Scientology is targeted for um, a campaign of harassment, character assassination, um, uh, financial ruin. Um, there's a policy that says specifically, if possible, ruin them utterly. Well, my ex-husband uh, became very disillusioned when he questioned one of these policies and was actually physically beaten by one of the uh, key senior executives of Scientology. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things actually do happen. Um, Scientologists are told that people like me, people like Greg, are lying, that, these, that everything we're saying is totally untrue. So if you ask a Scientologist, uh, a member of the Church of Scientology, about me or about Greg, or about anybody that works at the Lisa McPherson Trust, mm -hmm. they will tell you these people are criminals, everything they're telling you are lies, none of it's true, none of it's true, they're just trying to destroy our religion. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. However, one of the things that uh, has been done is that um, off-duty Clearwater police officers have been hired um, to uh, police uh, the portion of Watterson Avenue, um, which is right down the street from where the Lisa McPherson Trust is. It's several doors down from 
um, one of the big Church of Scientology buildings. And um, there are off-duty Clearwater police officers in uniform um, there from about 11 in the morning till sometime in the evening. Um, and the other day, a situation happened where um, one of the staff of the Lisa McPherson Trust was um, nearly arrested by um, a police officer who, in his off-duty uh, time, is working for the Church of Scientology. The Clearwater Police hired by Scientology have taken off-duty assignment on Waterson Street for about a year and a half now. Two uniformed policemen, often with their police car parked nearby, sit in lawn chairs with a Scientology security guard or in their police cruiser or private vehicle eight hours a day, seven days a week. They do absolutely nothing for their $21 per hour. They eat Scientology food, talk on their cell phones, fill in crossword puzzles, chat with their Scientology security guard buddy, who by the way sits in the police car with them at times, and otherwise watch the world go by. Shortly after the Lisa McPherson Trust opened its doors in January, uh, Bob Minton and I had a meeting with Mike Roberto, the city manager. And we explained to him that we're in town to uh, educate the city of Clearwater about some of the abusive and deceptive practices of Scientology. Mike Roberto's reply to us was that he had just spent two years getting Scientology off the front page of the newspaper, and he was not about to let us get Scientology back on the front page again. And he told us in no uncertain terms that if we caused any trouble for him or for his plans for Clearwater, he was going to get us out of town. The police have become less and less and less willing to protect us. And at, at this point, I would have to say that um, I really feel that the police show a prejudice against us. And you know who were doing this operation on Stacy? Office of Special Affairs! Not the Guardian's office. I've told you in earlier videos, this is just a reincarnation. Same tricks, same maliciousness, same venom. Stacy had other adventures. She was part of LMT. This was the Lisa McPherson Trust. A very wealthy man came out of nowhere, Bob Minton. Millionaire. And he became an activist, even though he'd never even done any Scientology. And he opened this trust in Clearwater. And Stacy was there. So the church's complete and absolute rage against her was to destroy her. But in the never never land of the church, they did get Stacy to contradict herself and undo some of her own truths, just like Vicki Asneran did, the, the, and just like Nibs Hubbard did. They, they, they can get people to do this is all, you're ambushed, you're threatened. You, you've got to be in their shoes to understand. Now, why would a person take back their own truth? You've got to walk with Stacy's shoes. The drive to destroy her was extraordinary. Meanwhile, Stacy and Stacy was alone. We're talking twenty. We're talking twenty years ago. No Google, no Twitter, no Facebook groups, no sharing, and no YouTube to let the world know, as we do now. Within minutes, they try something, and I guarantee you, it'll be on YouTube. has ridden off into the sunset and 
I don't blame her for just letting go. She was a brave warrior doing videos at the time I, like a donkey, was giving money, hard cash, to the cult of Scientology. So Stacy, wherever you are, I salute you.